Hey, welcome today. So good to see you as we join together for our daily dose. And uh, we're just delighted you've been a part of this journey with us, finding strength and encouragement from God's word. And uh, I, I believe today you're going to find great encouragement from a word that for over two decades in my life, and really it's been a, a verse that has been a lifeline for my wife and I for many years, found in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. The Bible says this, trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not on your own understanding, but in all of your ways acknowledge the Lord and he'll direct every step. I don't know if you remember some years ago there was a popular reality show that was called Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? And this show was one I remember watching it as a family and uh, I love the, the trying to answer the questions and knowing the answers and how far you could get and thinking, man, if I could just get on that show, I could be loaded because I could probably get past the first couple questions and then I'd bail out and say I'm taking the money. But I always found it interesting that in this show there were a couple lifelines that were always offered for the contestants. And as they were being tested and getting closer to the end and the money was increasing, uh, there was one of the lifelines that I always found interesting. It was to phone a friend. And I always thought it was interesting how these people had friends that intelligent. I, I don't know about your friends, but um, I, I'm still looking for some friends that are pretty smart like that. But they always had these friends just brilliant and intelligent and could answer anything. And, and uh, they'd always come to that point and, you know what, I'm going to take one of those lifelines. I'm going to phone a friend. And they'd call a friend and inevitably that friend would know the answer. And and I couldn't help but think as I talk to you about the lifeline in your life, in the middle of the chaos, the crazy, the out of control or seeming out of control, how do you stay grounded? How do you stay rooted? How do you stay in a place of rest and peace and not anxious? Well, I have news for you, not to cliche that statement, but you have the privilege to phone a friend and that friend is Jesus. He's someone that is closer than a brother. He's near to you and your lifeline today is to call on him, trust him with your heart, soul, your life. Lean not on your own ability to understand, but there are those moments when you don't comprehend, what do you do? You phone a friend and you tap into prayer as your lifeline. There's a theologian by the name of Dallas Willard and he was a, a spiritually mature man. He was asked one day uh, how he just maintains calm and maintains ease and how do you how do you maintain spiritual health? What does a believer or anyone for that matter do to maintain spiritual health? And he paused for a moment and he looked at the person who was interviewing him and he responded with these words. He said, the way that you maintain spiritual health is that you have to ruthlessly eliminate hurry from your life. Well, what does that have to do with anxiety? What does that have to do with phoning a friend? What does that have to do with this life? Well, it has to do with this aspect of hurry that often opposes and even kills those times to get alone with God, to withdraw, to pray. Hurry is the killer of dreams and purpose. Hurry is the killer of relationships. And so many times what hurry can do in one's life is instead of getting things done, it inevitably makes you anxious because you didn't get enough done. And I have news for you today that, that the lifeline of prayer in your life needs to be attached to killing some things that maybe have grown bigger in your life that has kept you from really praying. Maybe you've gotten busy. Maybe you've allowed worry to take advantage of some times and seasons of your life. Maybe you've allowed anxiety to grip you. And instead of doing what Jesus modeled, as he would withdraw from the expectations of others, the demands, the needs, the expectations of your children, your spouse, your boss, all of these things, Jesus would consistently withdraw and he would go to a place of solitude, not isolation, not being alone in rejection, but solitude. And he would relentlessly eliminate hurry so he could fulfill intimacy and expectation of his father. I encourage you today as you may be battling some of these things to find this place of victory, trusting in God, not leaning on your understanding, ruthlessly eliminating hurry, and again, tapping into, phoning a friend, the lifeline of prayer in your life. I'd like to take a moment and just pray for you and your family as you're considering this week and what you're going through. 
May I pray with you that anxiety will not rule, but God's peace will sustain you. Father, I thank you for today, and we just rejoice in your goodness. We rejoice in your faithfulness, and I pray for everyone that is online with us, everyone going through this journey, that they would literally and spiritually overcome anxiety by tapping into the lifeline of prayer again. May you give them grace. May you be with them in mercy. And Lord, today we choose to eliminate those things that impede your presence, that interfere with your hope in our lives. And we choose today to eliminate hurry that kills intimacy with you. Would you let your peace reign in every home, every life? In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, God bless you. Have a wonderful day.